Hi, welcome to Smosh Mouth. I'm Shane. And I'm Amanda. And we have a special guest here today, Arasha Lani. Yeah. Hey. Hey, Arasha. Uh, we're going to be talking about something uh, pretty cool. Well, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if it's cool. cool. Oh. Uh, it was revealed about a month ago at Anthony's funeral oh, that Arasha uh, did a conservative dating app commercial. Yeah. And uh, so we thought we'd bring you on to talk about it and kind of talk about acting careers in general, because uh, I don't feel like that's an uncommon thing to end up on a project that you're like, I can't believe I did that one. Yeah, I feel like people don't realize that. That's Sometimes you end up on a project and you're like, oh my God, what happened? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, you can definitely assume that the, the anybody who isn't in the industry is probably thinking like, you see the job at full and you're yeah. like, oh, I'd like to apply for mm -hmm. this, um, which normally in any other industry, you have all your responsibilities, everything is completely clear and that's just not acting. Yeah, <laughs> so we'll get into that later. Um, but Arasha, it's great to have you here. It's been a minute. Thank you. It it has been. I mean, we just we just saw each other. Yeah, yeah. We were, we were at the same New Year's party. It's New Year's Eve party. Uh -huh. Oh baby. Yeah, uh -huh. we were invited. You weren't. It's not a big deal. Oh, you could have come with me, Amanda. No, it's okay. Yeah. Oh, I guess I did have a plus one, but I just didn't. That's like. crazy. I was roaming the streets all by myself. Oh man. <laughs> Watching the fireworks, catching the fireworks. Right. Right. That's really fun. <laughs> But it has been a while since I've seen you, so it is good to see you too. It has. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hi. Hi. Hey. <laughs> Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Your hair is getting so long. It's it's actually like it's really long. It's like back to where it was. For like. those of you listening, uh, Rosh's hair is really long. <laughs> yeah. Well, she had cut her hair, and now it's just growing back. I know. You. There's a photo of me uh, at VidCon that I just saw, and it's like here. Yeah. And it's that's up on your like shoulders. six, seven months I ago. Remember, was your head really that short? Yeah, yeah. I I'm so completely. dude. When people are like, "Oh yeah, my hair's gotten really long," I'm like, "Oh, has it?" I don't pay attention. Right. I God, you're well, such I, a dude. I'm such a <laughs> nice piece skirt. Of these are jeans, you know. <laughs> <laughs> my dad would always be like, "Great skirt." I'm like, "Dad, I'm wearing overalls. I don't know what you're saying." <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> what is with dudes? It's dad. They're like, "What's eyeliner?" And I'm like. Or your dad would be like, you have something on your face. You're like, I know, it's a pimple, okay? Uh, or it's blush. I, I put it there for a reason. You have stuff all over your face, Amanda. Dad. But I feel like, I, okay, what I'm saying is I feel like I see you guys so often that I, you don't notice that stuff as sure. time goes it's on. True. I, and also, yeah. I don't pay attention because I don't give a shit. Yeah, okay. He, one thing I learned about Shane while doing this podcast <laughs> is he's it. the meanest person on the Why? Series. What is with this? <laughs> Damn. I'm, I'm just kidding. He's the kindest person. Well, truthfully, the way, the way that it really affects me, I'll say, is with haircuts and stuff, is I don't like to cut my hair a lot because then you have to get new headshots. Oh. oh bringing right. it back around to acting. Trust me, I had bangs like... <laughs> an inch long <laughs> up to here and my hair was above my shoulders yep and now it's just growing out but it looks fantastic oh thank you i am yeah. i actually love it it's right growing now. out yeah i think it looks great um but every time you make a significant change to your look like you, you gotta take new headshots because yeah, cast directors won't recognize you right <laughs> yeah, <laughs> who exactly. are you who is that and if you're in a le like they won't recognize you gotta be in a leather jacket so for them to know that you're a badass yeah exactly <laughs> okay you have to be in a leather that's a jacket. good callback <laughs> otherwise they won't know that you're gonna they get on csi won't. or criminal minds <laughs> leather jacket guys and commercials Gotta have a fun pop collar with glasses that you never wear in real life. That, These are all, Amanda's referencing all of her own headshots. <laughs> Literally. But also everybody's. Like those yeah. seem like pretty important guidelines that every actor hears with their headshots. Like, of course, the leather jackets look serious, the pop of color for commercials to look lively and fun and natural. And, and it's then just the mom, like, the mom with like the button down and an over sweater. I'm like, I don't know a single mom who wears that. I, they literally, they're I, all nobody married. In commercials, nobody in commercials dresses like regular people. Yeah. They're correct. always dressed just slightly not Nicer. human. Nicer. Yeah. Correct. Yeah, not it's just, human. It's just not, it's, it's like aliens trying, but I feel like marketing execs and stuff, they, they don't, create actual people. Yes. No, it's like a dystopian kind of. Yeah. Especially for women. Like, I feel like the young mom was the straight leg jeans that cut right above the ankle and flats, always, mm. button down and like a cardigan over with your hair half up. Oh, yeah. But like still really nice and like very little earrings. I feel like that's, yeah. No, it's it's very, it's, it gets very mm. specific like that. And, and it, like the added 
complicated layer is when someone's like, oh, but change it up. Like, you know, you don't want to mm -hmm. do just the basic stuff, but then you're like, okay, but then I don't want to not get the standard and, and just do something that's too bold and risky. Yeah. So then it just ends up all getting like really messy. Yeah. It's too much. I, I, I can't follow those rules anymore when I go to auditions. I'm just like... They're like, uh, orange jumpsuit because you're a worker. And I'm like, I don't have that because I'm in prison. What? I don't have that in my closet. Oh, yeah. Oh, then you're f I don't have any of those things in my closet. Let's be real. No. And you, the truth is that you have to end up making so many more investments. And, and you end up just not getting paid for any of that. Mm -hmm. You pay a significant amount for headshots. Oh you pay a significant amount for the outfits, for the makeup, for the hair, like all of that added stuff. And then you might not even book a job. Correct. Do you guys ever think much, sort of change the subject, do you ever yeah. think much about like what you're wearing here at Smosh? Because I, I, I try to not repeat outfits too often, and I end up just doing it because mm. I run out of clothes. Yeah. And I'm just like, oh, well, so I'm, I'm just going to wear white T-shirts in every video because it's just easier. I, wish I just wish I could do that. Yeah, yeah. You, why not? I don't know. I can't wear just a white t-shirt. People <laughs> are going to be like, okay. What um. if everyone at Smosh just wore white t-shirt and blue jeans if, and that's our thing? Cool. If that was our thing. Hey, if that was our thing, I'm down. I'm down. It could be our thing. That could be our thing. Okay. Wait, what if we just don't tell everybody? What are we in, like, well, we Greece just lightning? did just now. Okay, no, we can tell. Everybody in this room is in on it, but the rest of the cast, totally pranked. Oh, well, I guess we could start, and, and if the rest of the cast doesn't go along with it, they don't listen to this podcast, <laughs> and we're going to know right. then. Yes. Okay, so new uni uniform, just white t-shirt, blue jeans. I'm kind of rocking that right now, but, like, plain white. Yeah. I'm not rocking that at all. It's what I rock every day. I will say I am. Oh, yeah, you're rocking that, this, too. I have the huge advantage here. Yeah. Because this is my standard outfit. So it, it is. is a little unfair for everyone else. I feel like people are like, is Amanda okay? Like, no. Oh, yeah. And yeah. We went down and. We're all going to look like farmers. <laughs> wardrobe, wardrobe is hard. I would say wardrobe on Smosh is hard. Like, mm -hmm. also, it's very hard to not repeat outfits. Mm -hmm. And you do run out of clothes. Yeah. I, you yeah, run out of clothes, that. it's really hard. And also, it might be freezing out there, or hot in here, or Bro. cold in here, or hot out there. No, this set, <laughs> What? Which, which is it? I think it's this set gets freezing cold, yeah. yes. and the, the Smosh Pit set, hot. for Try Not To Laugh, gets super hot. Super oh. hot. So I, throughout the entire year, you can't dress for the seasons. You have to dress for this specific stage, Correct. and that specific stage. <sighs> See, I'm always cold everywhere. Really? Um, so, but I don't think that my warmer clothes are my most fashionable clothes. Like, I'm all for layers. But sometimes if I need to wear a tank top, like, I will tough it out. I'll be like, I want to wear this today. Like, I'm just going to put this on. In between videos, like, I'll go put a blanket on. But I will tough it out. That's wow. crazy. Yeah, yeah. Beauty is pain. Those are like models when they take photos and it's, like, snowing out. And they're just yeah. like, oh, gosh. I don't know if I could really do that. I could never do but that. But to answer your question, more than wardrobe, what I actually just think about is my hair at Smosh. Like, I just kind of, like, oh. uh, I, I, like, space it out in my head. Like, I'm like, okay, if I wash my hair on Monday, I'm supposed to be at Smosh on Tuesday. Tuesday, so I'm gonna be frizzy. So I'll I'll do that whole. We had that process. New Year's episode of uh, Reddit stories where we're like, right before we start filming, we're like, we have these fun hats, oh, yeah. and your face, you were just like, oh, <laughs> cool. Yeah. <laughs> After I washed my hair. Yeah. <laughs> and I think it was also you had like a, a party that night that you were throwing, and so you were like, did you wear the hat? Oh, oh no. You put it oh, on for like on two for seconds, beginning. and you started, and you're like, yeah, well, great. Anthony just like knocked his off, and then we were like. Oh no! Okay, I yeah. Guess we'll just, I guess we'll just carry on without the hats. No. Then. Um. Yeah. What if I get a mohawk? I think that would look great. But then with a white. Selena. We heard Selena just goes. Mm. Mm. So you want to wear a white tee, denim jeans, and a mohawk? I actually yeah. think I'm on board. That I don't know. Understand why that that combo. Here's the thing. Works. You know what I really like? I like it like shaved and then a fade up and then a little bit more hair right here. So okay. not like a full mohawk, okay. but just yeah, 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 yeah. You might look a little too military though. No, I'm. I I like do that. tend to look a little too like yeah. Straight cut. J yeah, yeah, like 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 oh that guy's from Texas, you know. <laughs> What's like, wrong with Texas? Not not like, but uh, you know what I you know what I mean. It's so opposite of my personality. Like I'm like I don't want to give off <gasps> no, different from Texas. who I am. You want to grow. There's out. nothing wrong with Texas. I'm saying I don't want to give off. I don't want to give off like that's a military type dude, and I'm like, 
hey, I'm actually not. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. You want I you think, want your I think it could be fun. I think it could give you some edge. Your look is your like vibe, right? Like that's what you're giving off, I think. So it's it's definitely important to make sure that it lines up with who you are, but totally cool to be like I'm gonna be I, I've been else. doing I've been doing I've been doing the same haircut for a while and I feel like it's what works best, which is just like I'm like take off everything on the sides and the back, leave a little bit on top. I want to see you do something different. Amen. Like what? Either I w- I, I want to hear me out, but shave it. Not 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 it? not at a zero. Yes. At like like, a, a, like a two. Like a two. <laughs> so I just have a little bit of frizz. Yeah. Oh, just is that what those Maybe I'll get the uh, the dewy was... from Malcolm in the Middle. <laughs> <laughs> no. I think it would look really good. I, I, I've I thought about doing that once I'm a little older when I'm like, okay, my hair is starting to go. I'm going to just take it all off. Think? That's what, that, yeah, I think someday I will. I'll do it with you. You talked about that. Uh, that was one of your I know. possible thoughts. My, Dying, hus- dying my your hair or shaving would be down if I shaved my head. Dude, I, I think it would like, be you so sick. Would you do it for money? <laughs> <laughs> how much? Okay. Just thinking. Quick. Let's get into the acting careers in a second. First up, <laughs> how, much, how money? much money would it take for you to shave your hair off? This is also getting into the acting career because hair, is, oh, that's hair is a, a role. huge part of acting. Yeah. Um, so if I was, I, I've always thought if someone offered me a role to shave my head and like completely dye it, I would do it in a heartbeat. Oh, sure. Like in a heartbeat. Now, if it wasn't a part of a role and I would have to shave it, a lot of things would happen. A, I would never be cast as the young mom ever again. Your hair would grow back. Okay, yeah. You but could probably wear uh, wigs and stuff. I like could. Truly. Or like an I, I tr- hat. I truly uh, let's, could. Let's take the acting career stuff okay. aside. Personal life, okay. just would you shave your head for for how much money? Oh, okay. I would definitely shave my head. I think my sisters would be very upset with me. Um, they like my long hair. They'd be like, "Why?" Probably my little sister would be like, "Yeah, f- yeah." <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I guess I would shave it for three thousand. Okay. Okay, that's, that's pretty a pretty respectable number. That's pretty low. Yeah, I mean, if you gave me a thousand, I'd really have to think about it. I'd be like, okay. that feels low. Three thousand. So it really is something you're considering. I just think like it would be, be so fun. I think it, I I think women look really well, really good when they shave their hair. Me too. And honestly, my whole time being an actor out here, agents and managers never wanted me to touch my hair. They were always like, I was always so I had the long hair. I never had bangs. I had it the same way forever. And then finally I was like, f*** this. Like, yeah. I want to change up my hair. So then I cut my bangs, and then I cut my hair really short. And my agent was like, you did that. Huh. Do you think it it's it's better? And I was like, I don't care. Oh, heck yeah. But you know what? It, it made me book different, yeah. different roles. Like, more, like, unique roles. I, mm. I remember I, for a Smosh sketch, this was years ago, I had to wear a bald cap. And I, 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 think I it was this. really well, este- really, really good looking. Like I looked fully bald and I take a photo of it. I post it on Instagram and I get a text message from uh, like the AD from Goldberg's. <gasps> and he's like, is this real? And I go, no, it's not. It's a bald cap. And he's like, okay, thank God. Oh, and yeah. I was just like, wow. Oh, like, they freak out. <laughs> yeah, no, like, people- you really have to. I, I have never done anything crazy with my hair. Uh, in fact, I dyed it dark because I was told to dye it dark because they were like, yeah, blonde guys aren't getting any roles right now. Like, it's not. This was back in like 2009. Yeah. No, poor blonde guys. This is 2009, 2010. It's different now, I think. But uh, I think it's the same. But at now. that time, um, yeah. So, uh, yeah. but anyways. Hair is a big part of big acting. Part. Yes. And I would accept 25,000. 25,000, who is? I get that. That's my, I, I think, that. I think 20, and, and you, you know would, what, if they take some taxes, yeah, yeah, yeah okay. I think, I could like it, but if I would do 25,000 and if they took out taxes and it ended up being like, probably like 18,000, I'd still be okay with that. I understand the trepidation. I'm like, 300. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 10 bucks. Um, you guys, you guys want to and you are, yeah. or, or actually like you could consider it. I have no desire to. Sure. I don't think I want to, but I do know that it would grow back and I also would do a lot for money. <laughs> <laughs> it grew out, It grew up so fast that it would only be a couple months. Same. Exactly. My, my hair grows really fast, but I just like... Change. I like experimenting and changing up, but I do think if I shaved my head, I think that I would be like, "Whoa, 
Yeah. I think it would be very be overwhelming. I do. Yeah. I genuinely think, uh, I think people in general, but but when women do it, I think it looks really good. Like Natalie Portman in V for Vendetta. I mean, it's like you hot. wouldn't expect her to look, I don't think you would have expected her to look that good mm -hmm. with it. But I think it's really, I think it's so unique. Um, Whenever I see it, I'm always just like, "That's really cool." Yeah, it's such a power move too. It is. It's powerful. Just to be like, yeah. I don't but care. But you got to You got to own it. Yeah, if yeah, you're, yeah. If you're, you not, have to own like, it. You have to. Anyways. Yeah. We're already back into it. Let's talk about acting. We're all actors here, <laughs> I believe. I think so. Yeah. Um, how long have we all been acting? Amanda, how long have you been acting? So I started acting in a musical when I was. Five years old. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I was a part of an Orpheum. I don't know if you know. like a theater. Yeah, yeah, a theater, local theater. Um, I took acting classes there, and I was a part of it. And I was in and out of musicals ever since I was little. Mm. Actively acting, like, like career. career acting, when I turned twenty-five. Wow. So it's been going on twelve years now. Right, because we've talked about in you LA. Had, you had a bunch of other different jobs. Like you were you were oh. trying other careers out, and then you were like, "I'm doing this." My mom was like, "Acting sounds fun as a hobby. Mm -hmm. Fun. You're gonna work for the DA. Oh, <laughs> like right. you need a real job. Sure. Right? Acting was never a real job in my mind. I'm also from the East Coast. Do you know what I mean? Like that mm -hmm. doesn't exist there really. Mm -hmm. And so I did a bunch of other jobs before I moved out here when I was 25. And so actively, I've been pursuing acting for 12 years. Wow. Damn. Yeah. It's really cool. Yeah. Um, for me, I, I also started like just acting uh, a lot younger. I think I was, uh, I was going to enter into sixth grade. Um, and that's pretty much when I started. I remember there was like a... Uh, like an elective fair or something like that, like mm. going into middle school. And you just kind of would walk into all these different rooms and learn about these different clubs. Um, and I remember for theater, um, we like walked in and they did like a little snippet of uh, like their play that was going to come out later that season. And I just remember sitting there and like watching them like doe eyed and just being like, I want to be up there. Like, I want to do that so badly. And mm -hmm. I knew right away, I was like, I have to do theater. Um, and that's when, again, I also just started acting. But career wise, professionally, I started right out of college. Um, so I was 21, 22. Yeah. 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 About, about three years ago. And you both like moved to LA. To get into it. I moved to LA not like I knew my sister, but no one was in the industry that I really knew. And so you yeah. just were like, you you did the like stereotypical like I stepped into Hollywood not knowing a straight up with the intention of getting into this industry. My husband was like, wait, so you moved here not knowing any like not having any connections. I had zero connections. That's Ooh, crazy. Zero. That's crazy. Yeah. I, I just did workshops and I did a workshop and I joined a theater right away and I got a commercial agent and that's really just where I started. Totally. I think that's that's how to do it. I mean, I I, I would say I, I felt a little more protected, a little I had a little bit more of a safety net underneath me. Um, cause as you guys know, I went to Emerson mm -hmm. and it's very yeah. common for, uh, Emersonians to just move to either New York or LA. It pretty yep. much just separates after graduation. Um, and, uh, at first I was thinking about staying in Boston cause I loved it so much. I just thought I would hang out there cause I obviously had my community out there. Um, but I don't think I mentioned this to you guys before, but I did a, I was a stand in, um, for, uh, the, that movie that came out last uh, Christmas season, Spirited, with Ryan Reynolds and Will oh, Ferrell. Oh, yeah, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so The Ghost of Christmas Past is played by Sunita Mani, um, who is uh, an Indian woman, uh -huh. and I was her stand-in, um, which is a crazy story, by the way. I just have to cut it and tell you guys how I got that. Um, because that was when I was working at Lululemon um, in college, and uh, the casting director from Boston Casting, she, like, walked in... <gasps> Uh, I didn't know her, obviously, uh, right then, but we were hanging out, and I, like, helped her shop for leggings or whatever. And then when she was checking out to, like, give her the receipt, I got her email, and she said, like, it's blah, blah, blah at Boston Casting. 
And I was like, I remember Boston casting. <laughs> of course. Oh yeah. Um, and I was 21. I was very like young and very like, again, not even in the industry, but I just kind of had this instinct to, to be like, you're a casting director. And she was like, yeah. And I was like, I'm an actor. Just, you know, maybe maybe you should know that. Um, and she was like, She's like, oh. no, you're not. You work at Lulu. She's like, uh-uh, you just help me shop for leggings. Um, but she was like, oh, cool. Like, well, like, write down my email. Like, maybe send me, like, your headshot. And I was like, hell yeah. Okay, this is the biz. This wow. This is how Hollywood this is like goes. like the most stereotypical, like, Truly. I made it, I, I saw a cashier at a Found you at a, a, at a restaurant. Yeah, I, and I emailed her. I sent her my headshot. She was like, let me ask around and see what there is. A week later, she called me and she was like, Arasha, do you believe in fate? <gasps> Literally. And I was like, <laughs> oh my God. I, just think- I was like, what do you have for me? And she was like, this is actually perfect. And obviously <laughs> it wasn't perfect because it wasn't an acting gig. It was a stand-in gig, which for those of you that don't know in the industry, a it's stand-in. It's the back of your head. <laughs> it's a, but I, it's, a, it's not an but, easy job. But like, tons of people make a living off oh, of the stand Goldbergs actors. had like a team of stand-ins who were there for the entire show. Totally, yeah. yes. It's it's basically like, uh, you, you could say it's another crew position. Um, mm-hmm. You're basically there for like helping the crew with like lighting and framing um, and just being the second team before the actual actors come on and do the whole scene. Yep. One of the stand-ins on Goldberg's ended up, he became a grip on that set, mm-hmm. which I'm like, uh, that's, that is so hard to break into those industries totally. that I'm like, damn. Yeah. Like, so a stand-in is kind of a way in for probably a lot of different mm-hmm. part, types of jobs. Totally. But it's, uh, I'm sure, how was it? How was doing Oh that? my God. It was like, truly life-changing like it was so so cool again like I know it wasn't the perfect gig because it wasn't acting but I was so excited and I was like hearing all these big names right like Will Ferrell Ryan Ryan Reynolds Octavia Spencer I just was like oh my god this is amazing like all of this is just like happening to me so quickly you know Mm -hmm. um and I was on that set for about three or four months which was whoa yeah yeah it was so every day every day um there were you know obviously days that I wasn't needed but it was like whenever she was on I was on right um, that is so cool. So that was your yeah. first job. Yeah. Like, you got right into it's it. It's kind of funny. It's Yeah, I, I started right away on this huge, like, big picture Hollywood set. Um, but that was really what launched me into wanting to be a professional actor, is I stepped onto that set and I watched everything um, work basically to the best degree, right? Like, when you yeah. step onto an amateur set, you're not really seeing the magic of what happens in acting. But when you're on a set like that, like you're seeing everybody work so creatively, so efficiently. Like, it, it really was just, like, uh, admiring That's a me. really cool, That's so cool, like, first I didn't know that. Oh, yeah, yeah. Situation. So pretty much right when I saw that, that was when I was like, oh, I need to be doing this for the rest of my life. And so after you did Spirited, is that when you then moved to L.A.? Yeah, yeah. So it? Spirited blended in a little bit into when I signed my lease, which was the beginning of September in 2021. Because wow. it was shooting out here. It was shooting in Boston. Oh. But you were like, as you're doing it in Boston, you're like, I'm gonna move to LA. And right, I decided to move to LA and I was really lucky. My two best friends at the time in college, they also were like, F- it, let's go to LA. <laughs> that's, that's fantastic. <laughs> that's amazing. Yeah. Um, so I got to move out there with them. Um, again, like I ended up moving out closer to the end of November um, because mm. that was when the movie fully wrapped. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, again, I had a lot of good connections, like good people that I had yeah. met there. I had a lot of good insight and I had just you were now up. best friends with Ryan Reynolds and Will Ferrell okay the, <laughs> Ryan Reynolds He's also like Anchorman 3 are you interested Ryan introduced himself to me first name basis but like five Ryan. times <laughs> like five million every day times. He's, like, he's like hey how's it going I'm Ryan Reynolds <laughs> no that's literally the first day the first day on set I remember he came over to all of us and he was like first day and everyone was like oh my god like so exciting and then he came over to the stand-ins and he was like all right, guys, like, we're going to be working together. Like, let me hear your names, whatever. And I was like, Arasha. And he said it back. He was like, Arasha, got it. Walked away, whatever. Mm-hmm. Maybe two weeks later, he's like, I'm so sorry. I don't think we've met. What's your name? And I was like, Arasha. And he was like, Arasha, I'm Ryan. I was like, I know you're Ryan. And he walks away. And then literally he did that again. Like, three weeks later, he was like, I don't think we met. 
that? What's your name? He's and like, all like, right, stand-ins, we're gonna be working together. Yeah. <laughs> so at least he's trying. No, I'll of give him course, that. of course. He was very, very kind on set. Again, like ev- that is obviously a joke, and I understand that he meets so many sure. different people. It was just kind of funny to me that I was like, You've said Arasha, and you don't remember that? <laughs> like you've said that a few times, but that's okay. I, I forgave him. It was truly just a wonderful experience. Three or four months is a long time for yeah. a movie. Yeah. That's crazy. I mean, it was, I don't know if you guys saw Spirited. It is. I haven't seen it yet. It's an amazing movie. I loved it. Um, and I can't you know, wait to pick you out. Oh, you'll see me in the. the You're touching like, a rock, that's a rock. <laughs> That's a Russia. Well, stand ins Russia. <laughs> stand ins very rarely even get like bumped, right? To like being a crew position or like being background. There was one day that they bumped me to being background. Um, and I and you can see me in the background. It's like an off it's like the office scene. And at first I had done a whole like thing with Ryan and um, I forgot the other actress's name, but she was from Young and Hungry. Octavia Spencer. <laughs> <laughs> um, She's from what? Uh, Young and Hungry. Have you ever seen that? No. With Emily Osment? I'm forgetting it, but I, I spoke with her. Spencer. I spoke with her for like the whole day that I was on set because it was me, her, two other background people, and Ryan, and the five of us were doing this like scene. Um, and it was so fun and so great, but of course it ended up getting cut. So you can just see me like very quickly in the background in this like blue dress. Um, but all that to say, that was pretty much the moment that I was like, okay, I'm moving to LA, I'm doing the acting thing, and I know a lot of, I learned so much from Spirited, so this is everything I'm gonna take with me, and I'm just gonna use that's that to That's so valuable me. to be on a set yeah. for that amount of time. Oh, it's so valuable that's, to be it, on set Anytime, because oh, what yeah. was your first set experience? Well, first, how when you moved out to LA, you were uh-huh. like, okay, how how did you first start getting into? Or you just said, but. well, I I literally went on um, a casting site, I think Casting Frontier or whatever, sure. or backstage, and got into a theater immediately, and started doing improv and sketch shows like every single Friday, and then I auditioned for Groundlings, and then. I think even before that, I don't even know how. It was like through being at the theater that someone was like, oh, you should do this workshop. It's to get commercial agents. And I was like, oh, and you just do a scene. And I got my first commercial agent from that. Oh, okay. And so then I started getting in like the casting director rooms and they were like, you have to do student films for your reel. And I was like, sure. Ooh, student films. Oh, wow. Student that was pay my, your dues. My, that was my break in, too. Yeah. That was it my was first. student films, and I was like, mm, huh? Yeah. I, I remember feeling like, what am I doing? And I, I just, I remember everyone was so obsessed with like being SAG, being SAG. And then I all of a sudden just started like booking commercials, and I was like, oh, okay, maybe I'm good at this. And I literally didn't even know what Groundlings was. I'm telling you, I came in here knowing. Nothing. That's crazy. Wow. I've heard auditioned... about Groundlings no. so many times over the years. I didn't know what it was at all. And then people are like, oh, it's for Will Ferrell and Chris Wigg. And I was like, okay, I'll audition, you know, sure, let's try it. And then I just fell in love with it. And literally through that is how I met my big comedy community. And then it's just like word of mouth, like what to do, what to do, what to do, what yeah, to do, yeah. what you need to do. And you got all the way up to Sunday Company, yeah. which for people who don't know, like Groundlings is like, it's it. there's a couple like peak comedy theaters, improv theaters in LA and New York, but Groundlings I think is like, in LA is known as like the number one for a lot of people, mm. UCB and Groundlings, but it takes so long and it's so hard. You start at the beginners, then you go to intermediate, then you go to advanced, then you do these writer workshops for like years. And then like a select few make it into Sunday Company and it's so cutthroat, yeah. it's so brutal. Yeah. I've had multiple people, you included, who have gotten there and it's a full-time job, yep. but you don't I've get paid. It's a lot of work. <laughs> you don't get paid, so but it's a full-time job yep. and you have to be pumping out sketches and characters and things. Yep. All the time. Oh. I wrote hundreds and hundreds I, of sketches. I probably wrote like t- five, five, six a week or something. It's insane. And when you pitch, you don't sit and talk. You go up on stage and you grab people and you cold read and you pitch it to your fullest, like full heart, full character, fully realized character. And yeah, it. and then you also have like breaks, like year breaks 
where they're like, okay, it's a two year wait list for the next round. That's insane. So in between that, you have to use the teachers and have them coach you and perform, 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 perform all the time. I mean, every night I was trying to find a stage to perform. It was crazy. Oh. Yeah, it, it was like seven and a half years of my life out here, but it taught me so much. It taught me, yeah. I, I, it pushed me to a point that I never even knew I had in me. Mm -hmm. And it also taught me how much I love comedy and how deeply I love acting. Like yeah. I love acting and it taught me what I don't want too. Yeah. And I have so many lifelong friends from it. Like I'm just so grateful. I, honestly, moving out here and not knowing anything, I'm so grateful that I was just like, yeah, I'll try that. Yeah. And people are like, so you did improv in college? I'm like, nope. I was always way too afraid. You did the uh, the Phil Hartman route because he was, I want to say he was like 28 and he like was working as like an art designer of some sort. And then he just happened to be like, oh, I'll, I'll walk into, I'll do this theater and like was just one of the funniest people of all time. Do you know about Phil Hartman and Growlings? Yeah, that he apparently haunts it. Mm -hmm. I've oh. heard that. He's apparently a ghost at Growlings. Oh, I'm sure he's, he is. He's... I haven't seen him, but many people have. And he wears a Hawaiian shirt. He, I don't oh. know if people realize he's like <laughs> one He of, wants to be seen. <laughs> he's yeah. one of my biggest influences. I like, know. So much of my character and comedy yeah. and stuff comes from Phil Hartman. Yeah, how did how did you get into all of it, Shane? Uh, I started, I did a, I, I was not as a like little kid into thinking I'd be into acting at all. Mm. Um, and uh, you know, I came from a military family. Like my grandpa was a fire, or uh, my grandpa was a um, uh, Air Force pilot. My dad was an Air Force pilot. So cool. Um, so you know, I don't know what would have happened if I'd made it to eighteen and I hadn't like gone down this path. I don't right. think I would have ever gotten in the military or anything like that. But I don't know. Then you could have that mohawk. Uh, yeah, they can. Yeah, yeah. That. But I lived in Arizona, and there wasn't like a big. Yeah. acting scene that I would have just fallen into. You know, it's not like there were big comedy theaters or anything. Mm -hmm. But uh, fifth grade, uh, we did a, we did Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Um, we did a play. My fifth grade teacher wanted to hold this play. And um, we had, like, uh, roadblocks in the way, even of just doing that play, because um, we were like, oh, yeah, we're going to do this play, and we're going to do it in the auditorium. And then the principal said, no, you can't do this play. Theater has no educational merit. Oh, he's it's the guy who would burn insane, books. Insane star oh to Awful. it. Villain um, of a Disney movie. I know, so insane. I still vis vividly remember my teacher coming back into our classroom. We're all in fifth grade. She's sobbing, crying, oh. telling us this story. And then she's like, we're going to do it anyway. We'll just do it in oh. our classroom. Yes. And oh uh, so we did it. Anyways, I, I was the only one or I was one of the only ones who auditioned for Willy Wonka. And I was just like, I, I memorized not only my lines, but I memorized all the lines. And I was just like, obsessed with it and I, I i wasn't thinking about it at yeah. the time like mm -hmm. when we were into this i wasn't like acting and stuff i was just like into yep. this whole thing and, yes. and just making people laugh and getting because um i had become a class clown like in that year or the year prior was mm. before that i was a super quiet kid mm. didn't talk at all but then I had some friends who were kind of class clowns. And I was like, that's kind of awesome. <laughs> they say stuff in the middle of class and people laugh. It is all so funny. are like, Shane. Ugh. But I paid my dues in third grade. And then uh, nobody laughed at office. any of my shit. Aww. And I had a lot of girls be like, you're stupid. And I'm like, I know. Hey, it's, uh, it's a tough world, stand up. But by the time fifth grade happened, I had that audition. I'm like, I'm primed for this. Yeah. I've been performing. Mm -hmm. um, Did so you get Willy Wonka? I got Willy Wonka. <gasps> but I, was, he I think I think I might have been the only person who auditioned for it. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's the key, guys. That's how you book. Yeah, it. sure. You Wipe out the rest of the audition. competition. Um, but uh, but I had so much fun with it, and then um, people were like, "Oh, like uh, Sh Shane." People were telling my parents, "They're like Shane should do theater. Like it seems like he loves it, and he's really good, or whatever." And so I went and did one uh, community theater play. It was called uh, "The Best or Worst Christmas Pageant Ever," um, and uh, oh, yeah. it's a known I've one. I've heard of that one. Uh, got a smaller part in it, but I had a blast doing that. Mm -hmm. Was super into it, and then um, I got into an acting class out there, uh, the Phoenix Film Institute, and. Um, I got really lucky with these acting coaches who they they would film the classes. So they would have a camera Whoa. and they would have you like they were teaching you literally how to do auditions Whoa. in front of a camera. So I got all this super valuable information. Oh. They also did improv in that. And I didn't know I, I had no intention of getting into improv, but they just happened to do it. 
And I had, at that point, I was like, oh, yeah, dramatic acting. And, um, but the improv in it was so much fun. I was having a blast. Uh, and people told my parents, they're like, oh, you should get him out to L.A. You should get him an agent, whatever. Um, and so I got an agent in Arizona. And I'm 13 years old. So 13-year-old actor in Arizona, what's great is that there's just a ton of availability. Like, mm-hmm. you're, the competition's not much there. I now absolutely would never tell a kid to get into the acting industry or audition and stuff at 13. I'm like, mm. just live your life. Yeah, yeah. Be, get into it later. Be a teenager. 13's a really tough age. Don't don't think about your career yet. Like, you get those years to not worry about your entire life right. and career. Um, but, uh, so I got into it and I booked, like, the first two jobs I auditioned for. One was a student film. And that was an experience that took like a year to film because oh, they'd like get we'd film like on like two days and then like they'd, they'd two months mess up. two months later they'd be like all right yeah we need to shoot this and thing you're like, and what I'm getting paid zero dollars <laughs> yeah. yeah five bucks to, foot, um, to footage you'll never see and you never want to see <laughs> right <laughs> sorry um, and there was oh man I'm just it's just I'm just now recalling there was like a scene that had like a gun in it and I'm like wondering about the safety that was involved oh with that. my god they're like you're I, thirteen right Hold yeah. Yeah, you're 13. Uh, really? uh, no, I had a gun pointed at me, yeah. uh, like in, in it and, and stuff. And I'm like, okay, I, who knows? That's yeah. Wow. Uh, but I got really lucky because one of the other jobs, um, and actors know this. One of the other jobs that I got, uh, it was this indie film that had a couple Mad TV actors in it, and I played a pretty small part, but it was SAG. Uh, and I got it, and I got SAG eligible immediately yes. at 13, nice. which is whoa. It is like one of the hardest things in this industry, and Just qualifying so for the got union. that. Yeah, it's so it's so hard. It's so hard. It's, I, I it's was like, so... it's never gonna happen for me. And then when it did, I was like, oh, it's yeah. it's freaking brutal. Man. I, I was lucky with Spirited too. That's how I got my eligibility. Damn. Throughout, yeah. Because like, once you get it's a couple brutal. of those, vouchers. I have I have friends who've been trying for years. It's truly a luck thing. That's fully. I, I think, agree. A luck it's thing. not. It's not how good you are. Honestly, you it is right luck. Room. And also, then when you get in, okay. Um, yeah, pay right. and but I, that's how I got into it. I eventually a couple, <laughs> yeah, you and then you pay, pay. so and much you money. Pay so much. All your money. But when you book under them, they also pay you. And you're but like, then you still pay. Whoa, and then you still pay. And then you pay um, more. <laughs> but uh, that's generally, and then it, it, like I started flying out here for auditions, and we did have some connections. My like because of this the the agents I had in Arizona whatever like there were some light connections made mm-hmm. but I I kind of came out here and you do have to just start doing workshops and started doing workshops started getting out yep. here um, and it's slow it took a it took a couple of years then because it wasn't until I was 16 then that I booked iCarly which was like the first like big job That's out here huge yeah I got and it's so funny that the the memes and stuff now are like Shane from iCarly I'm like at the time, it really was like the biggest deal to wow. me. Wow, of course, um, as it should be. Like I'm sure that was a huge, huge. Oh my god, I remember freaking out. I remember, I remember freaking out, but being almost more like, not upset, but like finding out that I booked it, I was more scared than I was excited. Oh, of course. So I was just like, oh, you got to do a good job. Shit. Oh yeah, I well. I kind of feel you. You know when you're like going out, you're like, God, I need to book this thing, and then you get it, and you're like, oh, you booked it. And I remember, like, a first big booking, you're like, oh, oh, God. Like, yeah. I remember I booked Amazon Alexa, and it was going to film all in Seattle, and it was, like, a 20 new media contract or something. And I remember being like, ha, oh, no. whoa. <laughs> I know. Nice. Well, it's, it's really that. Because you, because yeah. the the you more do well. the better you do, the more that failure gets scary. Oh yeah. Because you're like, if I fail at this, then my whole career is over. Right. You know, you fail at a single audition, you're like, whatever, that's that's not going to impact yeah. you too much. But you get a callback, you get another callback, and you're in front of the director and producers. Yeah. You go, well, if I fuck up here, they're going to remember me forever. Totally. This episode is brought to you by Rocket Money. So my husband and I live under the same roof, and. I found out that we have multiple subscriptions that we are paying for when we could easily just join forces and share and pay one subscription. I found out by using Rocket Money, I was like, oh my God, we are wasting so much money. So I got to cancel them all and now we're one big happy family. Wow, sounds like you're really in love now. 
Yeah, I think so. That's right. Rocket Money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps lower your bills. <gasps> I'm wasting so much money. Rocket Money has over 5 million users and has helped save its members an average of $720 a year with over $500 million in canceled subscriptions. Wow, that's crazy. Mm -hmm. Stop wasting money on things you don't use. Cancel your unwanted subscriptions by going to rocketmoney.com slash smoshmouth. That's rocketmoney.com slash smoshmouth. Rocketmoney.com slash smoshmouth. This episode is brought to you by Me Undies. Valentine's Day is coming up, and everyone deserves to feel comfortable and a little sexy. No matter if you're in a single, in a relationship, or a situationship, whatever it is, everyone deserves that. And Me Undies is here to help with their underwear and loungewear that are all very comfy and very sexy. <laughs> and you can get one that matches your boo. So you guys could be wearing the same underwear. Well, not the same underwear. You know, the same print, maybe. I'm really excited because I am getting two new pairs, and they have the coolest prints. They have, like, palm trees and hummingbirds and hearts. They're so cool. I'm so excited about it. Yeah, I have some MeUndies myself, and uh, I've got some classic pairs, Ooh. some some solids, some solid prints, and then uh, I do have some silly ones. I even have a Christmas one, and I wear it year-round. What? That's outrageous. And they've got Valentine's Day prints for you to check out. They've got tons of options, and they got the classic stuff, too, mm -hmm. if you want some solids, whatever you want. I can't wait to get mine. This Valentine's Day, give the gift that'll always have them thinking of you and get 20% off your first order by going to MeUndies.com slash SmoshMouth. That's MeUndies.com slash SmoshMouth for 20% off plus free shipping. MeUndies, comfort from the outside in. Wow, I'm excited. Let's get back in. Acting is the wildest <laughs> journey I've ever gone on, but I will say for me, and we've all started at different times, there was never another path for me because... Yes, it all kind of happened, but ever since I was little, it was never going to go away. Like, for me, it was just, like, this mm. burning desire. It was, like, every time I was in a job that wasn't acting, it all, something always felt like it was missing, like, big time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, very much missing. And I think that's what makes people move across the country with nothing. Yeah. And that that that's really what it was for me. And and I feel like whether you get that later, I think if you really want to do acting, it's in there. Like right. it's just it's there and I don't know, sometimes it gets ignited later in life or mm -hmm. someone yeah. goes, "You should try this." But I just feel like you have to have that fire otherwise this job is it's not, you don't even have a job. That's that's exactly. It's not even a job. That's exactly that's, that's what, what I was going to say. That's what sucks the most. Yeah. I was going to ask, like, what, like, getting into more of the bullshit of it, like, what is the hardest part? Because for me, the hardest part is the space. There's so much just, like, nothing that happens. You know, yeah. I, I came out here with this this mindset of, like, you know what? I heard there's a lot of rejection in Hollywood. I'm ready for it. <laughs> Reject me, casting directors. Reject me. But it wasn't cast directors being like, you're never going to make it in this town. No. It's a lot of, okay, that was great. Thanks. And I'm like, I drove I drove two hours <laughs> to this audition. I went in for a minute, and you said, great job. Yeah. And I'm leaving, and I have to drive all the way back home. Yeah. Yeah. And I know I'm not going to hear anything. And that's going to happen so many times. Yeah. And then it's also just when you go weeks without an audition, and you're yeah. just like, what am I doing? Well, it even goes further back, right? Like to the actual audition, right? The preparation for that audition, right? You said you drove two hours. Like a lot of the times, especially now that we're in the self-tape era, we just get pages sent to you. And and you'll, you'll just get like 10 pages and it'll be like, and you can do that by Monday, right? Luckily that's changed. Yeah. Thank they God now. They have like a limit on that. Yeah, with the now new you, agreement. Yeah, now you have less than 10. Right. But <laughs> but the point is, like, you still, still you still have, like, a still huge audition before. to do. Yeah, and you're doing your hair, your makeup, you're getting ready for it. Like, now it's, like, a quality thing as well. You have to have good lighting, a good background, good camera. And then you send in this beautiful package that you get paid zero dollars for. Yeah. If you don't book the job. Oh, like, yeah. Like, you just did all of that for no D money. Don't be an actor to make money. Yeah. yeah. That's literally, you have to love it that you literally can't think of doing anything else. Right. And that's that's what I was going to tell you earlier when you brought up the whole advice of like, don't do it. Like, yeah. if, if you don't want it. Like, my whole thing is if you want it bad enough, you are able to overlook all the bullshit. Mm -hmm. Like, you are able to be like, okay, this sucks, but the alternative is leaving acting and I'm not doing that. I think that's true for all creative 
uh, pursuits. I agree. Uh, from what I've heard. Yeah, um, I agree. And I, a lot of pursuits even not like that. You know, um, people who work uh, in a lot of different industries too are like, oh, don't get into, like people who are teachers, unfortunately mm-hmm. they should get paid yeah. more. But people who are teachers are often like, you gotta love it. Like, I, you can't I, I also, it. I also think, I think for me doing it for so long, I think the biggest thing for me that keeps me going also is that I, when I turn 60 or 70, I don't want to say, oh, I wish I did that. Mm -hmm. I will say, though, I have put my heart and soul into acting since I got out here, like, from the ground running, that I will say I never want to stop acting. But I am at a place right now where I feel very proud of myself and very satisfied that if something were to happen, like, another strike or whatever, I would be okay because I've learned that you have to have hobbies. You have to have other things you love Mm -hmm. other than just acting because it'll drive you insane for me personally. And that's what's really helped me with this space because the space, when you go months without working, was really difficult. And now I'm like, oh, I have to act like acting could be taken away at any moment. So I have to find other things that I Mm. love. That's, That's kind of a newer thing that, because uh, the live or die acting thing, I had it for so long. And let me tell you, it burnt out my soul. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. It, and so now I have to be like, I love this. I love this. What else do I love? Of course, I want to act always. Sure. I, I literally would be happy if I got paid next to nothing and was doing a play. Like, oh, And I God. say this to Angela, and she's like, don't wish that. And I'm like, <laughs> why? <laughs> but I don't know. I just like... I think what's great about being an artist and acting is that I see it as like you're a cat. Like every year you have a different life in the mm. in the industry. Like every oh. year is a new way of looking at acting. I love that. Like this year is a totally different year for me. Last year was like a lot, like my own show. Like every year, it doesn't have to be a new project. It's just how you experience acting. I that's, think that's great. That's really interesting. Do you yeah. know what I mean? I think like, that's really cool. You're like a cat with a million lives. Like it's just like every year, look at it as a different year. I I love thinking about things like that because f- for me, the hardest part is definitely the like um, the mental gymnastics that I always play. Of like some weeks, I'm feeling so encouraged, and I'm like, oh my gosh, like. I have so much time and I'm at a good pace and and opportunities are around me and I'm lucky and I'm feeling it. And then the week after, I'll be like, what's the point? (laughs) Why should I and why would I and I don't deserve it and all of this. And it just goes back and and forth. Up and down. But I've also, I think, come into that same realization. Definitely like – spreading out that love, distributing it a little bit. That way you don't just have it in one corner of your life. Um, but also just like truly accepting. Uh, for me, I think I, for so long, especially right when I had that, this dream of coming out to LA, I immediately was like, oh, well, once I get it, I will be happy. I, bro. Oh. I, yep. I've told this before, but <sighs> when uh, the most toxic thing looking back was when I was a teenager out here with a bunch of other teenage actors. The every everyone thought this way. They're like, "Well, yeah, my goal is to make it before I'm 18." Yeah. And then you turn 18 and you haven't made it, and you're a failure at 18 years old. You can't fail your career at 18 years old. That's yeah. such a it's so messed you shouldn't up. Shouldn't have even started. And yeah. I thought that way. And then every year after that, you're like, "Shoot, I'm 20. It's gonna." And you you have this mindset of like, "It's Ugh. gonna get harder yeah. every year." Because now I now what am I? What do I have to offer? I'm not a kid anymore. I can't get those roles. Like I'm now I'm uh, yeah. competing against you adults. You age so fast, right? And, and, oh, it messes well, you up so much. I I look back on when I joined Smosh, and I look back, and maybe it's not visible, but I'm like, I can see how much older I was at 23 than I am now because of my mindset at that time. I was so, I was of the mindset of like, I'm done. Whoa. I'm done. And it's, that was all, that was what I was, it's what the industry does to you, but it's what I was doing to myself. Exactly. Well. But acting favors, right? The younger kids are like, you have to be in your twenties, your prime, you have to be so young and pretty. And so it, that feeling feels like it's fading. Like, Oh my gosh, my time is running out. But I, I've truly just accepted this as of the, the last few months and have just been significantly happier of just, you don't have to 
qualify to live. Like you already get to be happy. And and I love what you said too, is just like enjoying the now is how you're going to maintain longevity in your acting career. If you are able to be like, you know what? If I don't accomplish anything else, I've already accomplished so much. Yeah, you've already, yeah. And also like, I'm so like, fuck. <laughs> I'm so glad no one saw me when I was 23 and was like, you're booked because I am such a better actor. I'm more understanding. I understand who I am. I feel more grounded. I feel more able and strong enough to take on different characters and personalities. And totally, I feel just more understanding. Well, a really a bad thing that I did a lot is I would compare to other actors or actors previous to me. Yep, and I'd yep, be like, yep. oh, their career, that career. And it's like, you're never going to have anyone else's career. Never. No. You're never going to have anyone else's life. Your life is going to be so unique that it's scary because you're not going to know what's going to happen next. Yep. Mm -hmm. But it's going to be your own story, and that's why comparing is so stupid. I did it so much. Of but, course. Um, Same. It's like when you do auditions. I mean, like, and you have to learn to start trusting your own performance. Right. We we gotta we gotta talk about auditions because auditions are literally the biggest part of acting. It's, yes. You have to learn how to audition, and sometimes you have really good auditions, and sometimes <laughs> you have really bad auditions, which lead to really weird jobs. Um. Quickly though, can I ask before we delve away from your career, Shane? I I want to ask how your parents were throughout all of that. Did they want you to get into um, acting? Yeah. They they. They didn't want me to get into acting until I, I was very vocal about wanting to get into acting. And we also had other acting like acting coaches and agents and stuff. And I it's it's tough to know. Like, I certainly was saying it a lot. I remember being like, I want to do this. I, I my hair is crazy. I was going to fix. I want to be alfalfa in uh, <laughs> in Little Rascals. But um <laughs> I was, but no, I also don't. I also look back and I'm like I was 14 and I was mesmerized by a little bit of this fantasy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm very fortunate that once I got out here and I actually got into it, I also liked it. Yeah. But there's no way to know what it's actually like until you're out here and doing it. Um, it is strange to have so many uh, authority figures when you're a teenager, uh, try, like telling talking to you about your career. You know, I don't think it's healthy. And even though my parents were were great about it, they were they were they were had the best of intentions. And um, compared because I, I saw so many awful parents, right? Yeah. And like parents that I didn't even know were awful. You know, I was on the iCarly set with, and Jeanette McCurdy was there, and I I think oh, I yeah. met her mom and stuff, and I had no idea. But that was reading that book. I was like, that's obviously such an extreme. But I'm like, I saw. Everyone I feel like that's a child actor has some little tidbit similar to that yeah. of just like being told. Um, I've realized this a lot lately of like how much uh, by authority figures I was told to think about my body and my appearance. Mm -hmm. wow. And when you're a teenager and it's, yeah. it could be light. It could be like, yeah, you should dye your hair or, oh, you need to make sure you stay like like even I was told about my weight. And stuff like that of like if, yeah. if I got if you get too muscular they're like you sure. need to slim down like you're just even even when it's not a critique even when it's coming from a positive place or just truly a, in their mind a professional place yeah you're still being told to think about things when your body's so, not even fully formed but it's unfortunately but it's unfortunately the industry is so messed up in that yeah. way and uh, it's why there's a lot of push for for things nowadays that I think is so good. Of yeah. Like, hey, let's show real people on screen. Yeah. Um, because yeah. it's not just that we have attractive people. We have people who are like, we are, it's fake now. Yes. We're using CGI. We're using plastic surgery. Yes. We're using all these things. It's like, can we show real people? Yes. Um, yeah, I, I asked because I was curious, like, because um, I often get asked as well, like, um, just like how my parents mm -hmm. kind of felt about it, because um, it's also, you know, in in my culture, it's not something that was necessarily like uh, normal to my parents. Yeah. Um, I mean, obviously, like. Bollywood is a huge thing, and, and they were aware of, like, movies and acting and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't think they really ever took it seriously. 
Um, My parents took it very seriously. Uh, once I once we were out here, we moved out here. I mean, yeah. they took it very seriously. I think that they thought it was really cool. Right. And once um, I'm sure once you like get out here and kind of see all of that, I, that definitely that's where my parents are now. And I'm mm. I always like am able to answer that question and say that I'm grateful because they've truly been nothing but supportive. But I think the reason why it took so long for me to launch into it, because truly I would have also gone into being a child actor, um, was that my parents didn't really believe in that. Yeah. Like, they genuinely were like, is this really even anything? Like, mm -hmm. I don't really think it's going to happen. Yeah, and then, my parents were like, I'm sorry, what? Yeah, if, yeah. If I had gotten into this after I turned 18, if I had done it on my own, I wonder what their their point of view was. Yeah, would, maybe but maybe they would have I think they had, they had so many people... Uh, other people telling them this is what they should do that I think they trusted that mm -hmm. it wasn't just me saying sure. this and I also by booking a couple things in Arizona I think they were like oh they were like oh okay but this is real. you always underestimate how hard it's gonna be yeah yeah same I, like, think I booked some things in Arizona certainly I'll book some stuff in LA it's like no yeah no, you're not. I think the first time like I like actually like booked anything it was this like small 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 thing in uh San Antonio and it was like uh uh like on one of our like grocery store like newspapers it was just on the cover and my parents were like oh my god so acting is a thing so this is a real thing and Funny. i was like all right i guess i'll accept that if that is I think the it job took that a it minute, takes I, what i think it took a minute for a lot of my for a lot of people to accept was smosh i don't think they understood how big how big that um, was um my family has no <laughs> idea <laughs> that you're I on literally smosh send them and my mom's like so what what is what this? are you game? doing? She's like, so smash, smash, <laughs> smash is so. How do I find it? I'm yeah. like, but it's honestly I've one of the best jobs. Uh, um, yeah, yeah. But speaking of jobs, jobs. I, let's get to what we. Let's really get to talk what we really. Let's get because another minute. big part of of this industry is you end up on some really dumb Cringy. jobs, multiple jobs. I have ended up on so many stupid sets. Yeah, um, yeah. Arasha, Arasha, <laughs> your conservative dating app commercial. Yes. Uh, I will admit, <laughs> I had seen it before the roast. <gasps> I had seen it. I'd I'd come across it. Uh, wow. A fan a fan had posted it on our our Reddit, and I watched it and I I laughed. I was just like, "That's funny." Uh -huh. And then, but I knew about it. So when it got brought up in in Anthony's funeral, I was like, "Oh!" <laughs> I had because I was like, "That's such idea. a deep cut. That's such a like reveal." Yeah. But zero I'm idea. so curious to hear you talk yes. about the story of it. Yeah, I mean, I and I spoke a little bit about it, but to to kind of talk about the back ends of it, you know, I originally saw the job on backstage. Yep. And it was a long time ago, um, like pretty much right when I moved out to L.A. So yep. at the very beginning of it, um, I was like, you know, what you do to kind of get these auditions uh, is submit yourself, right? Like put your profile like out there and on backstage, it makes it really easy, just like actors access um, to put yourself up for jobs. Mm -hmm. And I saw this one um, for this for this commercial. And how do they label it? It was called The Right Stuff. It, it had the name on it. Yeah, but how would you know that that's a right wing anything? Exactly. You just think about song. it in a normal way. Also, observing it, right, the, isn't it the right, the right, stuff. right stuff, but right is in blue, which is, is that? Oh, is that right? Yeah, blue, blue is Democrat. Blue is Democrat. So I'm like, I'm a little confused. <laughs> yeah, blue yeah. Is I'm Democrat. like, that feels weird. Like, that's interesting. In red. Well, I mean, it was black. It was all black, oh, it was all black. when I saw yeah. it. It was just, you know, yeah. on the page. And then I scrolled down. It said, like, you know, uh, commercial. It had, like, some of the crew listed, the production company, um, and then, like, the roles or whatever. And yeah. I submitted myself for one. Um, and then I remember, like, hearing back, and they were like, okay, like, we'd love you free to audition. So I sent in a tape of, like, the lines they provided. And it was the lines that I read in the commercial. Like, it was not anything crazy. It was just simple. Yeah, like, I watched the commercial. I, I think wouldn't it's, think it's for Yeah, because right you're just like, oh, this guy – Tried to he he asked me to pay it's right. Like, nah. It's like a very basic it like seem right bad date thing. Yeah. So I I read that for the audition and then they reached out and they were like we'd love to like meet with you like could you do like a Zoom? So I did a Zoom and it was very professional. It was like a team of like five guys. <laughs> um, <laughs> and that's when you knew it was a right wing. Five white dudes. <laughs> and I was like, well, truly, that's a lot of the time the industry. So I was like, great. That is also true. <laughs> this yeah. is just uh, another thing. It was literally five guys. And they were like, hey, Rasha. Like, and they were making burgers. Stuff. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> they have American flags all over them. It was actually Sorry, a fast we, food commercial. Yeah, we work for five guys because we're five guys. <laughs> um, they And again, they gave me the outline 
line they did not mention, of course, at all. It being at all political. It was just like this is a dating app. Like this is the concept kind of it. Of messed up. They just they just put that out there, and and they were like, you know, uh, whatever. And and I had a t- I had I have my team as well, so I'd like connected my manager. Um, and it was just like in terms of like negotiation, but we didn't get into any of the specifics other than like. So your manager didn't know. No. Like we literally had but no idea. But also, does the commercial explicitly state it doesn't? It's kind of vague. It's it's pretty vague. I think I watched it and I was like, I would not immediately think that this is for. Well, it's very, unless I googled so, it. So so once so on set actually it was it was also very professional. Like everything was run like uh, very industry standard. Yeah. I was very happy with all of that. Still did not know on set and going through all of it. Um, the other two girls I met, they were very nice, like, you know, whatever. Months later, um, my best friend, like, texted me Ugh. a tweet. And it was just the tweet, and I clicked on the tweet. And it was a Republican candidate posting this oh. on their profile. That or maybe it was a Democratic a candidate, like, saying that it was a bad thing or something. But they just posted it. And I see it quickly. I remember I was, like, driving home, and I just see it, and I watched it. And I didn't see anything else. I just watched it. And I wrote back, and I was like, oh, cool. Like, that's what I did. <laughs> and he was Great. like, uh, Arasha, like, have you seen the comments? <gasps> and so then I went into it, and people were, like, bashing it, right? Not specifically me, but just being like, this is awful. This is stupid. Like, whatever. Mm. Like, all of this, like, negative comments. This um, hurts me. Oh, yeah. Like, ugh. So then I went back, and I was like, people aren't really liking it. <laughs> and he was like, well, are you catching like what exactly it is <laughs> and all of a sudden i am like oh no oh. <laughs> oh no 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 and i was driving again i remember specifically because i was like okay i got to call like 10 people the first one being my manager yeah. and i was like do i make a statement like oh. and do i like, make oh. a statement she was like, like it's no. okay if i have to pay on a date <laughs> She was like, she was like, do not do anything. Make a statement to what? She was like, it's fine. Like, I don't think that many people are going to see this. Like, if it blows up, like, we'll come up with something. But we do not need to worry about it right now. Like, you didn't know. Like, hopefully most people are going to realize that you didn't know. Like, it's going to be okay. Like, let's just, like, keep calling. And and I think she was like, if at Smosh, like, they say anything, like, you can have them talk to me if they're, like, worried. And I was like, no, they're not worried about me. So... I was like, it's fine. We're going to figure it out. Okay, so this um, was recent. No, it was like a year and a, a half ago, maybe. Maybe yeah. a year ago. Yeah. It was a while ago. And then I remember I called like the other girls on the set, too. And I was like, did you guys know? And they were like, no. They're like, and I was like, yeah. okay. <laughs> right? Just kidding. Um, so I, I like proceeded to panic for like the next hour as I was like making calls and like freaking out. And essentially, everyone was just like, it's fine. Yeah. Like, it's going to be okay. Oh, no. And then you get roasted on a- Anthony's funeral. <laughs> and then it gets brought back up. And it gets brought back up, and you're like, oh. It's, well, you're never safe. No. It was totally fair game. And again, like, I am actually grateful that it was brought up because I did need to uh, make a statement. Make a statement. And that's that's what I'm doing now. I get to make it I clear. remember I did wow. a commercial for some, like, mobile app, like, forever ago, and I still don't know what it was. Yep. I'm just like, it's uh, so it, easy. You've probably yeah. never seen it. You, it's, yeah, you, you just don't know. You really yeah. don't know for a lot of stuff, and you show up and you do it. Commercials are really, you show up, and they're often filming like multiple kind of commercials in one day. Oh, yeah. For the same thing. So you're just kind of going, and you're just, you often don't have lines or whatever. But you, and, and a lot of the auditions don't tell you the product at all. They don't even tell you what it is. Right. I've had that happen to me a few times. But then it's like, if you book it, then it's a product that you know, and you're like, oh, okay. Yeah. Like the the recent one that I did, it was for Ac- Acrisure. Acrisure? Okay. I had no idea what it was. And then I booked it, and they're like, oh, yeah, it's with Lionel Richie. And I was like, what? Oh, sick. <laughs> what? And I met his stand-in. Okay. And his stand-in was just like, I don't even know who I'm standing in for. And I was like, you're standing in for Lionel Richie. And he was like, oh. <laughs> oh, my God. Lionel Richie, what an amazing person. Oh, wow. He yeah. was amazing. Wow. Very humble. Wow. Shook everyone's hand. Unlike, unlike Ryan Reynolds, knew everyone's L- name. Lionel Richie, he's got the right stuff. Ryan knew my name. <laughs> he just You're forgot so it and then remembered when he asked me again. God, over over again. we're, we're going to be working together, Arasha. We, we met. But we I met. think I'm going to download the right stuff. 
so that I Okay. <laughs> uh, honestly, Shane, you'd probably crush on the right Yeah, place. actually get on there. No. And Shane? go with the mohawk, too. Shane? That'll oh, do you Oh, God, well. yeah. You would crush on the oh, right stuff. Me? Right. They'd be like, you're a lesbian, correct? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I would do great. <laughs> my only thought, my thought, my genuine thought when I saw that, that commercial, as I was just like, there are no women on that dating app. There's no, no f- way. No, so the, the commercial, you guys aren't on the... You You're guys aren't talking. on the dating app, right? No. You're just like tr- having bad dates and they're like, get on the right. So you're not technically even on the dating I'm app. I'm not even on it. We're hey. literally, we're at this party talking about our bad date. You know, I had a similar experience. This guy seemed normal on his profile. But when we went out, he asked, oh, do you mind paying? I left my gift card in my other fanny pack. I guarantee you, that the the whole premise of that was to get it to to sway a bunch of dudes, a bunch of toxic dudes, into getting on it and paying some sort of amount, and just getting a bunch of them on there, and then if it doesn't succeed, whatever, they get a bunch of money, and then they all date each other. Then they all date each other. <laughs> hey, again, I I, I I I can only say positive things about the production. Like sure. they were well, none all... of the production. They're I hired. They probably for didn't that. even know either. Yeah, like the they client just... and the production. They, they aren't really linked in, except for like during the process of choosing who it is. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So you really you really never know when you go on right. these sets. No. Um it's 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 it makes me laugh too cuz you said that you had shown up uh to a set and you had like a gun pointed at you. Cuz <laughs> literally you like And like then we 13. started rolling. <laughs> I I think I told you this once too like my very first student film, it was a student music video. Um, and oh. I showed up to that set. Oh, it's as bad as it sounds. Um, I didn't even actually continue it because when I got there, um, I've definitely told you this, Shane, because I get there and production starts handing out weed. And they're like, so we're going to have you guys smoke this. <laughs> Dude. They're like, bikinis only. <laughs> weed, yes. They, yeah. they, literally, they literally handed drugs out and said, smoke this. They were like, you're going to smoke this in the background of the club. And we were like, I also want to point out, look, morals aside, production-wise, any production person here would be like, that cost is so unnecessary. Okay, yeah. That is so much money that you're wasting. Well, that's the thing, too. When I say production, I mean a student. <laughs> <laughs> the student came over and was like, yo, here's some of my weed. Student Smoke it in the so back funny, for my bro. sick music Honestly, video. the student film that I did that I wish would never exist was me playing Aaron Brockovich. <laughs> Guys. Did you guys just remake Aaron Brockovich? We just remade, <laughs> what? We just remade. Aaron Brockovich Aaron. Reloaded. <laughs> we just did a scene from what? Aaron Brockovich. What? <laughs> that's not a. That's not. A, I can't shoot. I searched for it. We gotta <laughs> find I, it. I gotta find it because it's just. It's not a student film. It's just a scene from Aaron Brockovich, and it's so awkward. It's just me going through the filing cabinet and I'm wearing the smallest mini skirt and I'm like, why did I? And I'm going through, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going through the filing cabinet and I'm like, they're just boobs <laughs> or whatever line I had. And I'm like, I look back, I'm like, well, well, what did I do? Oh. I can't even use that for my reel. It's literally already a movie. Oh my god! But hey, the jobs we accept for you probably didn't get paid for that. Of course not. <laughs> you don't get paid for those. I got no. like I got like a voucher which I never saw. No. To see Aaron Brockovich. <laughs> okay. Anyways, um, uh, we have a little end segment we want to do. Mine ties in with all of this. Yes. Okay. Uh, a little end segment called Jaw Drop. Yep. Where we say something about ourselves or some just some sort of thing that'll make the other people's jaw drop. Uh, something shocking, something fascinating. Okay. Uh-huh. Uh, Amanda, do you want to start? I'll start. It's I don't even know. Is it that you did a student film where you were Aaron Brockovich? Because that that I already feel like I dropped our jaw a lot. Yeah. This is more of a jaw drop. That's like something very embarrassing, and I thought about it this morning. So when I was acting, I also was bartending to forever to like pay the bills. There was a guy who came up to me. And you know how when you see an actor, your first thought is, how do I know that person? Mm. And you think you know them as a a friend or whatever first, which is kind of weird. This guy (laughs) came up to me and came up to me and went, hey. And I'm not kidding. I thought he was an old friend of mine from Groundlings. I hugged him so hard. I was like, hey, man, oh, my God, how are you? And I found the 
myself rubbing his arm for like ever. This is the standard Amanda hello. My, my <laughs> hand was like gripping his arm, going up and down his arm, being like, how are you? How is everything? Wow. It's been so long since I've seen you. I thought he was someone from my class. And I was like, whatever happened with that class? And he went, I- I'm sorry. I was just looking for the bathroom. <laughs> He's a famous actor. Can you say what actor? I forget his name, but he was on Orange is the New Black. He was one of the leads of Orange is the New uh, Black. Jason is it Jason no, Biggs? No, no, no. I know Jason Biggs. <laughs> <laughs> no, I wouldn't I rub know his him. arm. No, no. Wow, so you just. So I was just like, oh my God, how are you? I think I hugged him twice. Because I was like, I know him, I know him, I know him, I know so him. Funny. And then it, he wasn't weirded out. He was like, Oh yeah. That just happens to him. He was all the like, time. Yeah, yeah, that's so nice of you. Um, I just was wondering where the bathroom is. And then <laughs> I was like, Oh, it's right up there. And he walked away and I went, and it all hit me like a ton of bricks. I was like, and I was watching Orange is the New Black during that time. So this was oh. a while ago. Oh, and I was like, okay, okay. Oh my god, I don't know him. That's... He's just a famous actor. And I just He'll rubbed, never forget that. I rubbed his arm. And honestly, he wasn't upset, but he was he was so nice and yeah. polite. Everyone loves an arm rub. Oh yeah. god. Uh, from strangers. Yeah. That's great. Hey, uh, I I've definitely done that before, that. not to that degree. Okay. But I definitely saw someone once at a party and I was like, hey, it's good to see you again. And he was like, yeah, man. And, I, and then I walked away. I was like, wait, that was just Jason Ritter. <laughs> that wasn't, that, I just watched him in a movie. That wasn't. Yeah. Yeah. So you didn't uh, see him again. No. Okay, but that's my jaw drop. That, just our jaws that were worked. dropped. That was our awesome. Our jaws were dropped. Okay. Um, Shad. Okay, so uh, I've talked to Amanda about that. Amanda knows this, but yeah. I want to say it here because it's okay. a crazy fact. Okay. So my first ever trip to L.A., I come out here for a workshop, like a cast director workshop. So I am 14 years old. And I come out here and I'm like, man, I'm going to I'm going to be I'm going to do this. I'm going to I'm going to go in there and they're going to be like, "Whoa, all eyes are going to be on me." Like, I was just buying into the fantasy and I'm just like cuz you you that there's that myth of like the people who make it, they know they're going to make it. Right. Yeah. They know. And I'm like, at this point I know that's bullshit. Yeah. But I I was like, "Okay, like I got to walk in there." And I'm I'm Shane Top, like you know, and there were uh, there just a, there was like maybe uh, like a dozen or so kids in this workshop, but there were two other dudes in this workshop, uh, similar age to me, similar look, and it was like already just like right in my face of just oh this is gonna be a lot harder than I thought, and I'm Ooh. not special. <laughs> the two people, <laughs> the two other dudes in this class, um, one was Sterling Knight who I would later work with on yeah. So Random yeah. and stuff. Uh, I knew him a lot through my teenage years. He's a great guy. The other person in this acting class was Austin Butler. <laughs> and, just went and on already, to do Elvis. And already at 14, I was just like, hey, man, ah, you're really good looking. Like, <laughs> just like, okay. Oh, and my like, God. Right, yeah, so hey, man, how's it going? Um no, back uh, then he was on. Back then he was like background, right? On like Ned's Declassified. Uh, a little bit. He started booking actually pretty quickly. Yeah. Uh, and and I that's he was, he's unfortunately so nice. <laughs> uh, he was a super chill dude. Oh. Uh, really cool. Um, we even exchanged numbers at the time. I doubt that's his You're number. You're like anymore. I can't wait to meet. Right. Yeah, I should call him up and be like. Austin, what's going on, How's dude? It, how was Elvis? Um, no, he's a super, super chill dude. And what's been funny is I have not seen him since, but like just every step of the way, like I, I've just been observing his career. He was on the episode of iCarly before my episode of iCarly. Oh my god! Like stuff like that, like just and then. Um, just going back to the whole comparison thing, like oh. it's just like okay, you've been nominated for an Oscar and stuff, but I'm like, whatever. My career is my career. Yes. Um. I have, like I said, I've gone through times. This was years ago, where I was just like, "Fuck." Yeah. He what? Did he, he made it, and I I didn't. But Ugh. I'm like, no, I. Not yet. Bullshit. No. But bullshit. also, you made it. I no, I'm super happy. Exactly. Um, I just think it's really funny. It's that... it's a really funny story. No, that is. So really anytime funny. people talk about Austin Butler, I just I immediately I go back to You're my. Like, yeah. Like, oh, my best bud. Let's my. Stop. My bro? I have his number. My bro, Austin yeah, Butler? That's yeah, a jaw yeah, drop, yeah. um, sure. That's fun. Yeah, so it's super insane. Damn. Okay, I've got a jaw drop for you guys, I guess. Um, it's not going to be about acting, though. I didn't, that's okay. I didn't nicely segue that because I just thought of that's this. That's fine. Um, but trigger warning, poop. 
Oh. Um, I so, go. so when I went Great. to uh, India for the first time, uh, it was when, well, actually I was born there. So uh, technically this is the second time, but when I went as like a conscious person, yeah. Um, yeah. I was, I think 15, maybe 14 or 15. Um, and I had no idea what India was going to be like. Um, Ooh. so when I went there, it was complete culture shock. I just was like, oh my gosh. I felt like, I felt like a little American princess, like being like, what? And like, what's that smell? And, and oh my God, I need this and I need that. And I just was very shocked. Um, one of the things that I was also very uh, shocked at was that in some parts of India, instead of a toilet, there's just a hole in the ground. Um, and I <laughs> didn't accept that. Toilets are kind <laughs> of holes in the ground, just with a nice little Seat. Seat yeah. Yeah. above the toilet. And the hole. that seat provides so much. Oh, it really is. Yeah, it's kind of great. Without it, you're very vulnerable. I did hear pooping in a hole like full squat is better for you. Yes, yes. It, I don't it know definitely why I heard is. That, but. So, okay. So I uh, didn't want to do that. Um, <laughs> so I held my poop in <gasps> for seven days. <gasps> Uh, oh. Um, and that wasn't the end of the trip. I was there for three weeks, but at the end of like seven days, we went to like my mom's sister's place and she had a normal toilet. Oh. So I was like, freedom. Did so I ran over there and I took a shit and it then was you made national the news house is in India. Guys, the house is destroyed. I feel like I was giving birth. Like yeah. it hurt. Were you also cuz I'm assuming were you eating any spicy foods while you were there? Um I don't know if this was a jaw drop. You know, I would, this is, your jaws my, were dropped. My jaws I looked dropped. at both of your jaws no, dropped. My jaws dropped. Look, it, I, that's the craziest thing I could think of in just a few minutes. I think it's fantastic. That's insane. Does your aunt know that you ruined her oh, bathroom? Oh, she knew before. I was like, was where's it, the bathroom? Did it at, your girl's fault. Look, without going into detail, <laughs> was, the, was the bath, like, did they have to call? people to come fix things. No, I didn't I didn't need to <laughs> I don't fix know. things. If, if I waited seven days that I <laughs> used the bathroom, I'd be like, you need to call You're you need to call multiple services. You're the right <laughs> stuff, no. honey. You're different. <laughs> Trust me, whatever I did went down smoothly. But I was fighting for my life on that oh toilet. My God. I was like hand on the wall, like I needed the railing to like keep me down. Cut, <laughs> cut to like Arash's family and the aunt like eating cookies, and they're like, "So, how was your trip? Oh, it was lovely. <laughs> what is that?" And it's like, <gasps> 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 ah, ah. it's like slamming its wall. It's like trip went well. She's doing fine. It's really? She sounds yeah. like she's dying in there. So, so the next time someone's uh, talking to you, they're like, "Hey, I'm going to India. Do you have any advice?" You're just like. <laughs> Take take a shit. Hold your shit. Take a shit. Just take a shit. And you're like, right when what? You get there, right when you get there, just poop. <laughs> just poop, just man. Poop just right just away. do it. Just do it. Don't just worry about it. Do it. Yeah. Um, wow. So I survived that. Arasha, that was uh, that was. I don't insane. even know. That was a. I think you won. Body drop. I think you won that. I think Austin <laughs> Butler. Yeah, loses literally, to, and like uh, arm. Sorry, Elvis. <laughs> um, our God. celebrity <laughs> stories don't matter in no. the face of that. Yeah, yeah. I already um, told my celebrity story, so Ryan and I, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's That's, not important. Yeah. Um, wow. Arasha, thanks for being here. Yeah, we learned a lot about acting <laughs> and how we feel about it. And yes. Don't become an actor. <laughs> yeah. Just yeah, don't. Don't become an actor unless it's like a burning desire and you can't do anything yeah, else. Yeah, yeah. I, I feel like I could talk about acting for hours, too. Oh, for like, sure. Just for inside sure. of our conversation, I, I know that I could feel so many, like, stories. There were so many questions and... I had on here that we didn't get to. Yeah, there. yeah. We'll yeah. be back. All right. All right. Thank you, Arash. Yes, thank you, thank you, guys. Thank you. All right. And thank you. And thank you. Thank you. And we'll see you next time, next Saturday. And hey, poop. Next Saturday? The next... I. <laughs> What am I saying? Well, yeah, I don't know. Next Monday. Are you okay? I'm not. <laughs> <laughs>